Hi, this is John from Chicago and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk uh, about the differences between analog and digital in your long range 4 inch um, quads. I have in front of me here the uh, iFlight Cimarron 4 inch analog on the left and the digital on the uh, HD uh, version on the right. Uh, just quickly, the uh, main differences are cost. The uh, HD version costs about $100 more, $200 versus $300. And then the weight, you have a weight savings going with the analog of about 29 grams. Uh, your dry weights are 161 grams for the analog versus 180 grams for the digital. Uh, the uh, main reason to go digital uh, would be the clarity of your video. Um, there's no doubt that the video image uh, and experience is a lot better than the analog version. Um, so that's what you're weighing. And I'm going to do a uh, uh, thrust test to show you what this will lift compared to other quads that I've tested. I will also do a um, range test to show you, um, talk about range and show you the results there. And then I'll do a speed, lap speed testing out in the field and I will uh, test both of these and compare them to all the other HD quads that I have flown. Now I'm doing a thrust test and it's lifting up six and a tenth blocks. So that's a thousand grams plus it's dry weight. So it has a thrust of 1239 with a power to weight ratio of 5.2. Um, now we're doing a range test. I'm starting with the analog uh, quad and um, you can see the OSD on the screen. I did not wait for the satellite lock, uh, so uh, that's not giving you the information on the GPS, but uh, the screen looks fairly good. Uh, nowhere near as good as the digital and uh, this has a 800 milliwatt uh, VTX in it where the digital has a 700 milliwatt and that right now we're at 200 meters and that fence is at 300 meters. All my DJI quads have made the fence and probably about 10% of the analog quads have made the fence for 300 meters. Uh, there's a person coming up here so I didn't want to scare them so I went around the backstop here uh, so I wouldn't disturb them walking their dog. But as you turn you could see the um, video is breaking up. Uh, the good news about analog is there's no latency or you can't notice the latency where on the digital you'd notice it but it's a lot clearer view now we're doing the um, high definition uh, DJI uh, version and you can see the uh, video is a lot clearer and uh, the OSD is on a separate layer and I haven't figured out yet how to print that or show that on the screen. Uh, there's a way to do it, but I just haven't gotten around to doing it. I did look, um, let's see, this is again is 800 or 700 um, milliwatts. And this is a, um, for distance, uh, for the um, flight control, I'm using a um, crossfire and the crossfire will have over a mile, probably several miles of range. So it will not fail safe. Uh, so it's basically just the video quality. The fence is at 300 meters and it's beginning to slow up on the latency. Um, and um, as a result, I was able to make the turn, but I don't think I could have gone much further than that 300 meters, but I am going through a lot of trees and that's, I think, affecting it a little bit. Uh, now I'm doing a um, run on the uh, park track. I'm doing three consecutive laps. This is the, um, this one here is the analog version uh, that I'm doing and I'm averaging um, 13 seconds per lap, which is quite good um, for three consecutive laps. And again, this gives you an idea of what the video will look like, uh, and I'll follow this with the um, video from the um, digital or DJI high definition, which is here. Uh, so this is uh, definitely a lot quicker or uh, clearer. Uh, the quad ends up being about a second slower per lap at 14 seconds. That's because I only flew uh, the one battery to test it. Um, I had a problem with an ESC burning out on uh, one of the turns right after this when I was flying the second battery, so I didn't get a chance to do a 
um, additional battery, and I think the two would probably end up being about the same at 13 seconds, but this one is showing 14 seconds per lap. And um, I personally enjoy the digital. I like to see the quality when I'm flying, um, and I, it's worth the extra $100 to me. Um, now you see the spreadsheet where I've summarized everything and my other DJI uh, small quads. And uh, the, these two are highlighted in yellow at the bottom of the screen. Um, again, all the DJI quads uh, are 300 meters. I'm going to get a longer course. I'm going to see if I could uh, go out somewhere and get a road that's isolated that I could fly for a mile or two. Uh, but right now, um, there I'm just getting the 300 meters. And uh, the other thing is the um, uh, this model, whether it's analog or digital, it handles great. It'll do freestyle. Um, that's one of the advantages of this over like my um, Crocodile 4-inch. Um, um, it's a lot better at freestyle. The RPM of the motors are a little bit higher. It doesn't quite get the... Um, um, time, extra time, flight time, but um, I'd sacrifice that for the durability and uh, a little bit better at freestyle. So it's a multi-purpose quad. So overall, I do recommend uh, either one of these, but I, I prefer the uh, digital or the uh, HD version. Uh, it's worth the extra hundred dollars. If you have any comments or questions, please leave those below. And this is John from Chicago, and thanks for watching. And don't forget to hit the like button.